Alright. Make sure sound is functioning. Let's see here. There we go. Do we have sound? We do! Hooray! Alrighty. Get organized here and we'll begin. Brush, brush. Paint, 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 paint. Alright. So today we're going to be painting this uh, Stormcast Eternal Praetor from the Dominion box. Uh, this is one of the new bodyguards. Uh, they bind themselves to a hero at the beginning and then they can take wounds for them basically. Uh, this is from the, I'll mention, I mentioned this on Monday but I'll mention it again. Games Workshop did not send me a box of this. This is uh, the local game store I work at. Uh, I'm painting the store copy that they sent us. They send stores an early copy so that we can put the miniatures on display and drum up sales, that kind of thing. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. I think there's only six colors on this mini. We're not doing a specific storm host. We're just doing our own thing. Uh, so yeah, well, let's get started. So I'm starting off with Black Templar. And we're going to put this... And also, I will say, this is our only contrast paint on this miniature tonight. So if you're not the biggest fan of contrast paint, this might be the episode for you. Um, so we're going to put this on the scabbard here. And on this tassel he's got. A leather shoe or something underneath his armor. So we'll put it on that. And we'll get this other knee joint. And this is just to darken the areas underneath the armor that uh, that won't be gold. Basically just so they disappear. We don't need them to be bold and standing out. I'm also going to do all the area around his helmet here. Some of this we will come back in and paint with one of our armor colors, but for right now. Alright, then he's got some more gaps in his armor under here. We'll paint those in. See if we can see the other one. We can't really see the other one. So then we'll just get down here. He's basically just got uh, armor on the front of his wrists here. And he's got like a glove and some, some belts and stuff there. So we'll do that. And then he's got his belt that he wears around his waist. We'll black that out also. And then he's got a couple little belts that stick out on his um, wrist pads here. I can't remember the word for them. Fan braces? Or maybe greaves? I can never remember which one's which. I think greaves are for your feet. Or your shins, rather. I think van braces are for your, uh, for your wrists. So yeah, there we go. We've got all that stuff blacked in. Now we're going to go on to the main color on this guy, which is, well, gold is probably the main color, but the main, like, color color. Gold isn't really a color color, in my opinion. This purple is a color color. I'll stop saying that now. Uh, so we're using Nagaroth Knight, and this is going to be on the outside of his cloak and on the little banner on his poleaxe here. So we're going to need to do two coats of this Nagaroth Knight. It doesn't cover this... Uh, this contrast paint primer the best. This is primed with a wraith bone, if you're curious. Um, it is kind of a, an unfortunate waste of the wraith bone. Um, however, I primed them all, expecting to do a more contrast paint heavy paint scheme, since most of my painting recently has been contrast focused. But uh, once I did the tests and figured out how I was going to paint them, it ended up being that we're only using the one, so, but they were already primed, I'm not going to go back and reprime them, it does help, we can use the contrast black, black templar, instead of a layer black, 
So it does speed that part up a tiny bit, not tons, but like I said, they were already primed. I wasn't going to go back and reprime them, so. And it's not, I say it's a waste just because of the cost. Uh, Wraithbone is, Wraithbone and Gracier are quite expensive primers, and I try to only use them when I'm actually going to use contrast on the model. But in this case, we just have to bite the bullet and accept it. So like I said, we're going to need two coats on this because it doesn't cover the greatest over this light color. Just making sure to get all the little bits here. The, um, the edges of the cloak are going to be purple, and then the inside of the cloak is going to be our blue color. Um, but just making sure to get the edges because they are going to be the same purple. Then I'm going to get this banner up here. And... When I test painted my test model for this, and we might do that in this stream also, I was uh, I'd basically like paint a layer of purple, paint another color, come back, do some more purple, paint another color, realize I missed a spot of purple, go back and do purple. So we might be hopping back to this purple several times, but for now, two coats will do, and uh, I'm gonna do the second coat immediately because by now it should be dry relatively anyway on the back and as you can see the second coat really firms up that color and gives us a nice nice deep purple without any of these streaks or lines in it and that's what we want you can really see the difference there there's two coats there's one coat if that's not why to do two coats there's your thumbnail side here. You just want to make sure that your first coat is dry before you start trying to apply your second coat. As you will, if you're not careful, if your brush is just a little too hard, bristles aren't quite as soft as they should be, uh, you will tear the layer of paint underneath the first layer. And that is a very annoying problem to solve. Maybe on a stream in the future I'll show you what happens when you tear the layer of paint underneath and uh, then I'll go about showing you how to fix it but for right now I'm not gonna do that especially when I'm well especially when I haven't planned for it but also I don't really want to attempt to fix a mistake on a miniature that isn't mine well a mistake that I haven't made accidentally if I make it on purpose or rather, if I make it accidentally, that's one thing. But if I do it on purpose to a miniature that isn't mine, hmm, seems a little sketchy. All right, so there's our purple. On the uh, on the other units, on the Vindicators and the Annihilators, they have purple shoulder pads. All three of the sculpts for the Praetors, though, their shoulder pads are hidden under their cloak, and so we don't have to worry about that. Um, if in the future... Praetors do get sculpts, maybe the multi-kit, multi-part kit, um, I would swap these colors on them. I would do the outside of the cloak in blue and do the inside of the cloak in purple because there'd be a lot of purple up here if you were going to paint the shoulder pads purple. And the reason I would stick with purple on the shoulder pads is because I'd want the consistency across the whole army. So now we're going to go to our gold, and we're going to use Retributor Armor, the, the go-to gold for the primary, or the primaris, yikes, for the, uh, the Stormcast. And this is just going to be all their armor. Um, the only things I'm going to not worry about getting coverage on are the decorative elements of the armor. So, for instance, this, this little thing here, it's on both arms, it's on both knees, it's in a couple other places. That part's going to be silver, so we don't have to worry about that. Just making sure not to touch the black and to get right up to the edge of it, and to not touch the purple. The purple is much easier to touch up than the black, though, so if we are going to make a mistake, 
Like if we're gonna, sn if someone's gonna sneeze, aim for the purple, not the black. As I say that, as I get a giant swath of gold all over the black here, Let's see if that'll come off. If not, I'll have to fix it later. Almost came off. Not quite. That's all right. I'll fix that up at the end. Oh, and I got some on the purple, too. Wow. First first bit of gold and double mistake. That's my favorite thing. This armor panel here. They appear to only have this armor panel on one side. This one is a, a shorter one. But it is going to be gold, and it does have a little decorative element up top, so that will be silver again. Oh, and I missed this pouch right here, too. That should have been black. All right, so we're going to be coming back to the black at the end, apparently, to touch up several things. So now we're going to go in here. And actually, if we know we're going to be touching up black, I won't bother painting around this little belt here. I'll just get it with the touch-ups. Save a little time there. Then I want to get right up to the purple here. We don't want any lines of the primer showing through. Um, what I mean by that is if we paint the gold almost up to the purple, but not quite, there'll be just a, a line of primer in there. We don't want that, because it will stick out like a sore thumb. All the way down on the armor here. There we go. It does get kind of confusing in some of these spots, like what is belt, what is armor. But the test model I did earlier helped a lot, so if it's your first one, just go slowly and identify each piece before you just start willy-nilly painting it. And it'll go much easier. Put too much paint on the brush there. And um, I'm using the the now new-ish um, Citadel synthetic brushes. So far they're working great. I love them. Careful with the black here around it. Forgot to even do these two little belts, so definitely gonna have some black to touch up. Well, that's okay. I like to avoid touch-ups when I'm streaming, just for entertainment sake. You don't wanna... Right, now we're going back to this color to fix a mistake that you may not make. But, uh, sometimes it is required. grab the thinner brush. The sm this is the medium that I'm using. I'm going to grab the small in a second to get that line of armor in between the, uh, the tassel cables or tassel cords there. Alright. Just this glove left. And then flip him over and make sure I got all the way to the edge here. Get his thumb. Good. Alright, then we just have his helmet in that area. And then the decorations on his poleaxe. Or whatever this weapon is called. Could actually look what it's called. As soon as I get done with this step and I'm letting the gold dry for a second, I will look what this weapon is called, since the War Scroll is sitting right next to me. Disappointingly not on top of the stack, so I can't just glance over. Make 
sure to get all these nooks and crannies of the helmet here. And then to get the back side of these armor plates. up to that purple and this is what we paint the black in there because anything we don't hit with the gold will just stay black and be fine assuming we cover all the primer which is what we have to do here there we go all right so then it's just the decorations on his pole arm pole axe whatever which are the, is the tip down here. And then that's it, actually. The decoration on his... He's got some decoration right here, but it's covered by the ribbon, so... Or the banner. All right, so while that's drying for a second, I'm just going to pull up his War Scroll card, and we'll find out what this weapon is called once and for all. Ah, oh, it's a halberd. Soul Guard's halberd. Okay, I was trying to... Make it more interesting than it really was. It's just a halberd. All right, let's. I'm gonna check the purple now. I think purple. We could go for one more coat. In a couple places. Just gonna do that real quick. Doesn't have to be everywhere, but just. In a couple places where I could still see just some faint streaks. Good. Alright, so next I'm going to do the silver. Uh, no, I'm going to do the blue. So, for the blue we're going to use Fenrisian Gray. And this is going to be on the wrapping here of the halberd. The wrapping on his little dagger but most importantly on the back of his cape. So I'm just gonna get all the way up in there and make sure there's no primer showing up there. This is a light color and so any overspill with the purple will mean you'll probably have to do a couple coats, but that's okay. And I forgot about this when I painted this guy. I did it on the test model, though. I'm just going to be pretty messy with the, getting the blue on in terms of the edges of the cape. And then I'll go back and paint the rims afterward. Forgot about that this time. And did paint the rims, but that's okay. So there we go. And we've got some under here to do. And these underneath parts, um, it's not as critical that you get as solid of a coat, because as you can see, looking at the miniature straight on, you can't even see under there, so it's fine. Some people disagree. Some people will say, if it's on the miniature, you got to paint it. Just no matter what, even if you'll never see it. I, I don't paint like that. If I'm never going to see it, then I don't want to paint on it. Get the wrapping of the handle here, and the wrapping of the, yeah, I guess the wrapping of the handle, that makes sense. The dagger handle, and then we'll do the same thing on his halberd. And I realized I said six colors earlier, it's going to be seven when you include the wash. But still, I think seven colors to paint a whole miniature like this is pretty good. You could obviously differentiate a lot of them. You could, uh, you could like make the tassel a different color, and you can make the belts different colors, and you could do all sorts of stuff with these guys to make them fancier. But for just a just a store copy and something that's perfectly playable. I think this seven colors is great. It's still well beyond the 
common tournament threshold of three colors and based. You've more, done more than double, in fact. But you haven't gone crazy, and it still looks good. At least I think so. So I'm just evening up this blue on the cape here a little bit. There we go. And now we're going to go on to the first of our two silvers. This is Iron Warriors. This is the darker one. And we're just doing this on the chain mail of this, uh, of this guy here. Or scale mail or whatever it may be actually called. Who's to know? The mail here, we're doing that in this color. And I'll see if I can just get back in there, just in case I can. Perfect. And then this is also the color of the weapon, the business end of the weapon. Just being careful not to nick the purple. Sure, get all the nooks and crannies of the lightning bolt and down here where the handle is. All right. So we're good with that. Now we'll go on to our second silver. This is the brighter of the two. And for that, we're going to use Stormhost Silver. I believe that's actually the brightest silver GW makes. So pull this out. First, I'm going to do this. A little too much water on my brush still from rinsing it off. Pull that back off. We're going to do this, this grungy face here. Could be Sigmar's face, but I think it's grungy. Alright, then the... Whew, touch up galore on this guy. Keep making mistakes. We're doing all the, the decorative parts of the dagger here, or the metal parts rather, in this color. And then all these bits on the armor I talked about earlier. You can just see some stuck in there. We have to come back and get a couple more things in gold, so if we make a little mistake here and there, we'll just touch it up when we do the gold. Be sure to get the back of these also. Nothing is stranger to me, or nothing like draws my eye more when one piece is painted two colors, one on each side. And I assume judges at paint competitions would gravitate to that as well. It just looks strange. Obviously, in some cases, it's merited. For instance, this giant cape that's here. <laughs> but when you just have an armor panel and there's no reason why one side would be a different color than the other, that's when we can start to have a problem. Well, there is one more tiny little silver detail I forgot about. This little seal right here will make that the bright silver. And then this little part that's holding the flag on. Cool. All right, now we'll do some touch-ups. I'm gonna start with the gold back to Retributor Armor, and we're using the small brush this time, not the medium. So first things first, I'm going to get this armor in between these two. There we go. And then I'm just going to float around checking for anywhere that we got some silver right there. 
didn't get all the way up in that crevice there. Same down here. Good. Nope, same down there. All right, and then just check, check the gold where we did the blue. Yep, here's some down here. We turned one of his pinkies blue. And a little bit more down here. Wonderful. Check back here. They look good there. All right. Then we'll get the black out. Black Templar again. And right here on these cables, we got some gold there. Cover that up. Back here on the heel, our very first mistake. Just kind of pull it on until it covers that up. And right here, also. There we go. And then these little things here. Good. And on this side, that'll do. A little bit of spillage right here. Just tidy that up. Oh, yeah, and this pouch back here, it should have been black originally. All right. So just, oh, well, yep, we got a couple places of purple to touch up. So we'll do that. There, we got some silver here. We actually need to paint there. There we go. And then up here is a little messy. We're just going to tidy this up. Good. Anywhere else? I don't think so. Alright, so that'll be that. That's our six colors applied. We're going to, just like Monday with the Cruel Boy, we're going to cooking show this. So, we, we take this. We apply the Nuln Oil. Bam. And we come out with this guy. So this is him with the Nuln Oil applied. I'll show you the difference here. That's him with the Nuln Oil applied. This guy also has his base done. This is the uh, what the swamp bases are going to look like. I think it worked out pretty well for being a pretty quick process. But yeah, so this is him now that he has his wash applied to him. So that's what we're going to do with this guy. He's got to completely dry before we do that, though. So I don't want to risk doing it now. And I don't want to just sit here watching him dry for the next 10 minutes. But this is what he'll look like when he's done. Um, depending on time, I'm going to go back and highlight some of the colors. But if not, I think it's perfectly acceptable to leave him just like this. Um, so yeah, the only step difference is adding the null oil, and then I'll just talk through the base really quick because I think some people might want to know what I did with the base. So I'll put put that there so we can kind of see the base, and then we've got a cruel boy. Let me just grab another one of these. I've got a cruel boy with the same style of base on here. So first, what I did is use a paint that I can't find. Good, good. Here it is. So first, Armageddon dust all over the base. After that, Sigor Brown all over the base. Then I take some tufts, uh, some Swamp XL tufts, some, I think these are lavender flowers, I think they're called, and some green shrubs. Put one of each of those, maybe two of one of them, around the base. Then I take some snake bite leather and put it just on the high points of the base. So when you put the texture paint on, some parts will be high, some will be low. Just on the high points. Then I take my flock from the army painter. In this case, just grass green. It's just the, the green sawdust stuff. And I sprinkle that on 
where the snake bite leather is. That, the snake bite leather just acts as our glue, but it's colored glue. Once that dries, it stays down just fine. Then following that, uh, in all the parts that don't have that green flock or a tuft, I put down some Green Stuff World UV resin that cures with a UV light. Oh, he's dead. Cures with a UV light. I just use this. You can also put them outside. Turns out the sun is a UV light. Who knew? And then I put the model back on, paint the base room black, and call it a day. So yeah, that'll do it. Um, I'll get this guy all finished up once he's completely dry. But when I do, he'll look something like this. So thank you everybody for watching. Uh, next, week's, next week's streams will probably be Dominion related as well. And... Going forward, we'll definitely see some more Dominion content. Um, I'm going to try to paint one of my personal boxes in 24 hours, so we'll see how that goes. That'll be a video. Um, I'm going to start working on a video soon, hopefully to come out on Saturday, of Yendrasta. We'll see how that goes. And then, probably for launch weekend, which will be the weekend after this coming one, I'll be releasing a video of him. Whatever this guy's name is. Orc war boss on gnaw giant gnaw nasher tooth, maybe? Something like that. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Whether you watched live or are watching in the future, I appreciate it.